Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What a joy and delight it is for us uh, from Ridgeways Baptist Church as men to join together with you in this collaboration uh, just to share the word of God. I am so blessed that, uh, you know, we have this opportunity. Thank you, uh, pastors, for the opportunity that you have accorded us. Uh, Bishop in absentia, thank you so much for giving us the, the opportunity even to share God's word today with you and uh, just to explore. So we will, you know, follow, you know, through. Um, the topic that you have been given uh, is uh, man, uh, his purpose, and his mission. And uh, David has alluded a lot to what we'll be able to share. And we'll be able to, you know, uh, I'm asking God to give me the grace to uh, teach, to preach, and uh, also to, you know, to, you know to, to be able to bring the word of God in, a, in, a, in an easy way, in a calm way, in a way that, uh, you know, we can be able to uh, understand. Because this is more of a teaching. Um, uh, I'm evangelistic in nature. I run around the pulpit. Um, but uh, I'm today asking God to give me the grace to teach and to preach the word of God. Um, so we'll take it easy uh, so that for, you can be able to follow with us and follow with me as uh, uh, unravel what God has put in my heart. Because, as you know, this is very important. Um, I, when I came across this topic in many, many years ago, I realized that it transformed my life. And by so doing, you know, knowing my purpose and knowing my vision, my mission in life, you know, God changed things around. God changed things around. Shall, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you and bless you for this great opportunity. This is your doing, dear God. You have called us this afternoon to be able to share the word of God, oh my Father, even as we look into the purpose of man that you have established, oh God, in, in us. Father, we thank you because, Lord, your word is you know, full of wisdom, dear God, full of direction, dear God. As we open your word, oh my Father, as I open your word, oh my Father, I pray for the anointing, oh God, to teach and to preach your word, oh my Father, that nothing of myself, oh Father, will come forth, but only what you have ordained for this day, dear God, before the creation of the world. Father, I bless you, I worship you, and magnify your name because you are a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A few, few years, you know, uh, uh, you know, a year ago or so, a young man who calls me uncle called me and said his name is, you know, Oliver. And Oliver called me and said, uncle, you know, how does a man find his purpose? He's a young man who is about 25, and he said, you know, how do I find purpose in life? How do I locate my purpose in life? And that question has, you know, been in the mind of many young people and many people in life. And sometimes as we'll be looking at it, sometimes it becomes a lifelong question that we keep on asking. And sometimes we are not able to find, you know, you know, the answers. And by God's grace, as we share the word of God today, I'm believing that, oh my, that God will be able to open our understanding, that we will be able to see the mind of God and the purpose of God upon man, and that we will be able to learn from the, the first man. And I'll be reading a lot from Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. And that's the basis of our, the, the three chapters will be the basis of us, you know, of, of our, you know, of our, you know, reflections this, this, this afternoon. And that we'll be able to share experiences. I'll be sharing experiences, you know, for, for my own life. Um, as David had said, I'm a father, I'm, I'm a father-in-law, and I, you know, I'm a husband, and, and uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a grandfather. God has blessed us with a granddaughter who is two years and a half now. And whenever she comes over home, we spend time with her as a grandfather. Uh, she calls me Duta. Uh, she's not yet pronounced Guka properly. She calls me Duta. So I'm, I keep on telling her I'm not Duta, I am Guka. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But she loves coming home and spending time with us. And, uh, you know, so we'll be sharing experiences and we'll have fun. And uh, hopefully at, as, as a result of this, uh, we'll be able to develop individually to start seeing what is your own purpose? What is your own mission? 
you know, what, you know, where, you know, what, what has God said about you? And, uh, you know, so this is more of a reflection about yourself. I'll be speaking to you as an individual. I will not be speaking to you, to your, uh, to, to your neighbor. I will not be speaking to your brother at home. I'm not speaking to, you know, a person who is not here. I'm speaking to you who is following us online, those who are in person in church, so that you can be able to find purpose in life, find your mission, find your assignment, and be able to activate it you know, uh, in your life, and also help others. And that's why we have a session like this, to be able to help each other, and we dialogue to be able to help each other. And in so doing, be able to serve God, and be able to serve people with our purpose and mission that God has given us. We're going to look at, you know, why did God create man? We're, look, we're going to ask our questions, what is God's purpose? You know, for man, what is man's mission and his mandate? We're going to look at, you know, how do I then craft my own mission and purpose in life? And then we'll, you know, we'll close with a call to prayer at the end of this. So the question that you are grappling with now, you know, we would like to, you know, focus on is, why did God create man? Was it an accident? Was it that she didn't have anything else to do? And one morning, you know, we start reading Genesis chapter 1 because God was bored and he did not have anything else to do. Well, you know, what was the purpose? Why, why create man? Why, you know, spend a whole, you know, six days, you know, creating the universe and eventually creating man? We, we would like to understand and to know, and this is, this is the basis of it and when we get to know you know why god created man then you will be able to understand your position as man you'll be able to understand why you are there you're able to understand why you are alive today you'll be able to understand where god wants you to go and so this question lingers in our minds and many scholars many writers many you know there have been all manner of you know you know uh, thinking about the purpose of man. But there have been very wrong perceptions which are self-centered. Self-centered in a way that we ask questions, you know, you know we think by asking who do, I want, who do I want to be? If you ask, you know, you, you are young people as they're growing up, you know, who do you want to be? Many will say, I want to become a doctor, I want to become an engineer, I want to, come a, to become a, a, you know, a businessman. I remember this young man who was asked by you know, a, you know, a senior person and, you know, in the village, and this is all what he had ever seen. You know, he said, you know, well, who, who would you like to be when you grow up? And he said, yes, yes, I have an answer. And he said, I would like to be a herds boy, to be milking cows. That's all what he knew about. And was that his purpose for, that's why God created him? I don't think so. Then you have other perception is like, like what, should my, what should I do with my life? And many people are asking, what should I do my, with my life? What you do with your life has got nothing to do with your purpose. What you do today does, has nothing to do with your purpose. And we will we'll look at this at some point, that many people find their purpose in life when they retire. That's when they discover, oh yeah, uh, God had called me to be a farmer. And now they start growing cabbages and they are doing so well. Right at the age of 75 or 70 years, then they discover their purpose when they are too late. And that's what David has alluded to. So what you do today is not what, you know, their vocation, your career, whether you're a policeman, whether you're a businessman, you're a banker, that's not your, what your purpose. And sometimes we confuse our purpose with what we do today. And we also ask, what are my goals? Every year we set goals. We maybe set one year you know, goals. We set five years goals. We set two years goals. We have ambitions and we have dreams for the future. Those are not what, that's not purpose. And we can only get to know our purpose when we connect with God, with the maker. When this equipment was bought, you know, or one, when you buy an equipment, Right? When you, you know, when you buy an equipment, there is what you call the whole product theory. And the whole product theory means that a product has to be complete in terms of how it is going to be used by the, the users. And one of the things that you find in a product is what? When you open the box, when you buy a phone, or you buy an equipment, what do you find inside? 
What do you find inside? You find a manual. Because a manual is a document that is prepared by the, you, by the manufacturer to enable you be able to understand the functionality or the purposes, right? What, the mind, the, what was the mind of the, the, the mind of the manufacturer when he prepared the, the equipment? And so we can only find our purpose in God because he is our creator. He created us. The Bible says he created us in his own image. He made us in his own likeness. So we can only find, and that's where, this is where it all goes wrong. When we start looking for our purpose in the wrong things, when we start looking for purpose, for our purpose and mission in life from, you know, maybe from our academic or from a prosperity perspective, and we feel so empty because we cannot find it. We cannot find them there. We cannot find the purposes that God has called us to you know, in all those things. So we cannot find our purposes this way. And many, many, many people have wasted a lot of time, you know, a lot of their resources trying to find uh, their purpose. What is, so what is purpose then? Now, purpose then is, uh, purpose answers the question, why? Why did the manufacturer make this product? Purpose answers the question why. It's the reasoning for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. Why does it exist? Why does this microphone exist? We can only be able to understand it from the, you know, from, from the manufacturer. What is the motivation? What is the drive to create you? What is the usefulness? What is the value you know, in God creating you? And we'll see in, you know, in, in the life of Paul, as we draw parallels in terms of the life of Paul. Paul, you know, before he came, became Saul, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 15 to verse, you know, verses, in verse 16. You know, we see the purpose of Paul, or Saul, before you know, he became Saul. God wanted him to reach to the Gentiles. And so we look at purpose. is why did God create me? And that, that's, that's a the fundamental question that we have to deal with. Why did God create me? And in there you will find your purpose. God did not create you for all these other things that we do. God had a reason. He is the one who created you. Now and then we have mission and we are looking at man, his purpose and his mission. And we are looking at what is mission. Now mission or assignment answers the question or deals with what and how. While purpose deals with why, mission deals with what and how. A mission is an important assignment that is given to a person. So mission is an assignment or to a group of people. A mission, right, well, whereas the purpose is a call, mission is a commission that God has given to you. When we look at Jeremiah chapter 1, we see God calling, you know, God calling, uh, you know, uh, 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 Jeremiah, and he says, "I called, I knew you even before you are called, you know, you are formed in your mother's womb, and I commissioned you." Now that commission, that assignment, uh, as we see there in the book of Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah, we see God was very specific regarding Jeremiah in terms of his his call his purpose, and what God intended for him to do. I would like to read uh, that from, you know, you know, Jeremiah chapter 1, you know, verses 5. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you prophets to the nation. That is God the maker. He tells Jeremiah, even before you are formed in your mother's womb. You know, sometimes we feel so useless, we feel so underspent, and, but God is reminding us that even before you are formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. That is the purpose of Jeremiah. That is, that is the purpose Right? God ordains. God ordains. God sets apart. 
Ordained means set apart, means set apart. I ordained you before you were born. And you see the call of Jeremiah, the call of Jeremiah, the purpose of Jeremiah. I ordained you. What have you been ordained by God to do? Jeremiah was ordained to be a prophet to the nation. Then he says he's in verse 6, then he said, Ah, Lord, oh God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm not a youth. And then he goes to say, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I have sent you. And whatever I speak, I command you, you shall speak. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the commission. That is the assignment. Yes, God ordained him as what? As a prophet. God ordained him as a prophet. But now he gives him his assignment, his mission. He says, I, I shall send you. You know, I shall send you, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you will say. You have been called by God. God ordained. God knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. This month I've been, I celebrated my birthday on the, 5th, you know, the 4th of May. And on that morning I called my mom. And we had a long chat for about 45 minutes. And one of the things that she told me on that morning, that she woke up very early in the morning at 4, and she started thanking God, that God, so many years ago, God blessed her with a baby boy. And that baby boy is alive today and serving God. And she had a lot of joy and excitement. And she knew that God had you know, ordained for her to be her for, for me to be her first boy, there are two other girls ahead of me. But as a son, I was a first son. And that morning, she rejoiced because a son was born to her. And for that, she earned herself an impressor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, Mom, even before I called you, I had already sent you my cake for the birthday cake. Then he says, you know, then he said, then verse 8 says, Do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So God calls, God commissions, and God covers. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many of us are afraid to venture into our purpose. Many of us are afraid to venture in our mission. God says, I have called you. I have ordained you. I have set you apart for a time like this as a prophet to the nation. Then he says, I'm going to give you a commission. I'm going to give you a, you know, a mission, an assignment which you are going to do. And he says, I, I am going to cover you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That you are not alone, so you should not fear. He says, do not be afraid, for I am with you to deliver you. God's purposes cannot be thwarted by any demon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God's purpose will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Today, you're going to realize your purpose in God. You're going to realize your mission in God. And you, you will know that the enemy cannot thwart. You may go through thick and thin. You may go through the valley of the shadow of death. You may go through mountains. You may go through the waters. You may go through all manner of things. But the purposes of God are Upon your life cannot be thwarted. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to lift you up so that you may know that you are special. God has called you. God has commissioned you. God is going to cover you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, see, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That is what God has called you to. God called Jeremiah specifically. He told him exactly what is the assignment, what is the task ahead of him. God wants to make it very clear to you that he has called you at a time like this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So don't feel that you, have, you are clueless, you have no mission. God has a purpose. He has ordained you before the foundations of the earth. Before I was born in my mother's womb, God had ordained me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the call of Jeremiah. God has called you. God has ordained you. God has commissioned you. And God is going to cover you. Do not be afraid. God is gone before you. Go, whatever it is, if God is calling you into business, he's going to call you. Brother David, hallelujah, God is going to cover you in business. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because God is going to go before you. Because he said, I will, do not be afraid about the mission, the purpose and the mission. The purpose and the mission belongs to God. 
When Paul gave his life to the Lord, the Bible says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, 15 to 16, but the Lord said to him, go to this, he told Ananias, the prophet Ananias, go to this man. This man is deliberately chosen, he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings. That was the purpose for the life of Paul. This man, Ananias, was telling God, I cannot go. We have heard bad things about him. But God tells me, go, because this man is a deliberate chosen instrument of mine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God has intentionally chosen you at a time like this to be an instrument of his. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Say, I am a chosen, just tell yourself, I am a chosen instrument, a chosen instrument. of God. Of God. Amen. Amen. He says to bear before the Gentiles and the kings. So Paul is called to the, to the Gentiles and to the kings. And we see a lot uh, of that when he is, you know, before Agrippa, before the, the Sanhedrins and the Pharisees, his ministry was there. And with the authorities of the day, in Rome, in Jerusalem, he was everywhere. That's what the calling for, for Paul. And we see his mission. He, God says, for I will make clear to him how much he must suffer and endure for my name's sake. That was the mission of Paul. God said, you know, he will go, he's going to suffer. And he says in Philippians, you know, chapter 1, that not only have we been called to, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have also been called to suffer with him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So purpose is important. You need to find your purpose. Rick Warren, in his book, uh, The Purpose Driven Life, say, he says the greatest tragedy in life is not death. Can you imagine that? The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but a life without purpose. A life without what? Purpose is the greatest what? Tragedy. If you are just floating, right? Like a plane that has lost compass, right? I read of a story of a Kenya Airways flight, I think to Cameroon or somewhere that had lost, lost compass, and it was just floating, trying to, you know, it was heading to, I think, Ghana or something, and it had lost compass. And, you know, it couldn't be able to land. It couldn't know where the airport is. Can you imagine a plane without, you know, uh, you know direction, a guy, you know, the GPRS to be able to guide it? And so they tried every means. And, you know, uh, you know they tried every means to be able to locate it. And finally, they were able to see another aircraft that they were able to share the frequencies. And they were able to be guided. And the airport threw like, you know, some lights and some bureaus of smoke so that they can be able to see where they're going to land. Greatest tragedy is life in life is not death, but a life without a purpose. Joel Austin says that God is not concerned about our comfort as he is concerned about our purpose. God is concerned about our purpose. Sometimes he shakes things up to get us to our destiny. Sometimes he shakes things around. Sometimes God has to shake things around. Then, you know, like then now, now in terms of COVID and all that, God has to shake things around. And there are many other things, you know, that we can be able to look at. T.D. Jacks, one of my, you know, you, know, you know, persons that I look up to, he says, if you cannot figure out your purpose, figure out your passion. If you cannot figure out your purpose, figure out your passion. If you cannot be able to figure out your purpose, figure out your passion. What are you passionate about? As a young person, as I grew up, I'm a trained accountant in business you know, and also in business and management administration. But my passion is not there. I discovered my passion way when I was a small boy. I discovered what it is that I need to do. And my mom you know, tells me about this, that as a young person, you know, I would go into the, you know, in, into the chambers and, uh, you know, in the middle of the maize plantation, and in there, I would, you know, play with mud, and I would make things with it. And over time, I've realized that God has called me to be a builder, a builder of lives, both spiritually and physically. I interact with a lot of students that are building their lives. I interact with uh, vulnerable people, 
lower in society that I'm able to bring up in their lives. I interact a lot with young people who have lost fathers and have become fathers to them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I build lives. I've worked with one of them, you know, you know, my son, Peterson, one of the sons I have adopted after he lost his father 25 years ago. I have worked with him literally step by step until last year in the month of June, I, I went to get a bride for him. And now they are expecting a child. And he, he called me the other night and he said, Dad, we are expecting a child. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I was so delighted. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God in me has put a purpose of building. Building anything. Building. I'm a builder. Builder of systems, builder of structures, builder of properties, builder of, you know, you know, you know, green, you know, green projects, builder of all manner of things. If you can't figure out your purpose, figure out your passion. What is it that you like doing? Very quickly, I'll go into the, you know, the, 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 the purpose that God, you know, has for us. And I'll not spend a lot of time because I've laid the foundation and we want to look at purpose from a cross perspective. Do like this. And then like this. So that is vertical purpose and horizontal purpose. Now, I'll be very quick because these are things you go, you know, uh, I'll just mention and you'll be able to run with me in the interest of time. The first is the vertical purpose. The first one is God created us and he has created you for his glory and for his worship. In Ephesians 5, Ephesians 1 verse 5, he says, he predestined us to be adoption, to, to us for adoption for himself through Jesus, the Messiah, according to the pleasure of his will. Right? That, you know, we are already predestined to be children of the Most High God. Revelation 4, 11 says, Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things by your will, they existed and were created. So, in whatever we do, Colossians, you know, one, you know, first Corinthians, first Corinthians 10 31 says, So, whether, whether you are eating or drinking, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So, you are created for God's worship. That is, if you are doing nothing else about your life, just worship God. You have hit your purpose. That is why God created you for worship. God created you also as an expression of your love. The Bible says in, you know, in John 3.16, for God so loved the world. You are there because God loves you. He created you for worship, but he also created you for what? As an expression of his love. You are a product of God's expression of love. And secondly, we see that God has created us in you know, vert the vertical relationship as man particularly, as the foundation, very foundational and very intentional, the priority of creation of man. Ma God created man first, not by accident, but by design, that man will become the foundation of everything else. Because out of man, the Bible says in uh, you know, you know, Genesis 3 that God what? God Eve out of man. And everything else falls and rises, you know, on, you know uh, in, on, over the man. It says that as a man goes, so goes the family, goes the society, and goes the world. Man is a foundational in the things of God, in the plan of God. God is very, you know, intentional about man. Man is a foundation. And, you know, for a house to be, you know, foundations means a lot. God knows that your worth is found in him, that you are the foundation of things. And finally, you know, God in the vertical relationship between us and God, God has called you to be, you know, in his grand scheme of things, to be, you know, God's representative on earth. This is man's, man occupies a special position in God, in the grand scheme of God of things. God established you as, you know, as a representative of God. And that is what we see. The relationship between Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden was God, Adam, of, you know, Adam represented God. And Eden in itself 
which was the, 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 you know, Eden means the delight or the pleasure of God. God established, you know, the first embassy on earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because this was God representative. Amen. This was the God's ambassador. Right? And he represented God on earth. So, Aden was the first embassy of God on earth. And God would come down occasionally to be able to have, you know, a communion with, with, you know, with you know, Adam and Eve. Aden was a command center for God's purposes on earth. It was the nerve center. Aden was supposed to be the pentagon of God on earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But because of sin, God moved you know, Adam out of it. But Jesus has come to restore that relationship between man and God that you represent God. And that's why today we are Christ ambassadors in, a, in this world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, the Lord's prayer says, Our Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. In other words, thy purpose, when you think about will, we are talking about the purposes of God, thy will or thy purpose be done on earth as it is in heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God intended to establish a kingdom and we are citizens of that kingdom. God has called us to be, you know, uh, you know, ne- you know, citizens of the kingdom of God. And we have that connection with God. So we have seen three things. Four things that God, you know, you know created us for worship. He has created you as an expression of love and a foundation for all things. And God has created you as a representative, you know, of, 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 you know, of his representative here on earth. On the vertical side... We see in, you know, you know, in, you know, in Genesis 2, 2 verse 28, we see God saying, then the Bible says, uh, uh, let, let's first look at Genesis 1, 28. Then he said, then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bird of the air and everything that God moves on the earth. In terms of relationship with the nature, the first vertical relationship purpose we have seen, God to be worshipped, to be, you know, we, we are here to represent him. Now, on the vertical relationship, we see God expects you to be fruitful and to multiply. God expects you to fill the earth and to subdue it. God expects you to have dominion uh, over the earth and to provide leadership. When you look at, uh, you know, being fruitful, we want to see that God wants man to be fruitful both physically and spiritually, reproduction. God wants you to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, repro- you know to, uh, to, to reproduce, not just physically, but also, you know, spiritually. We see here the evangelistic call of God. This is the first time you are recently seeing God expects you to not just bear, you know, biological children, but also bear spiritual children. Last week I was in Nakuru traveling, and as I said, as I come from, you know, on a Sunday morning, I realized my car, you know, the boot has jumped. You know, it can't close. And so I decided to first go and have somebody check on it. And well, you know, eventually I got somewhere and I you know, said, could you check on my boot? And they opened up and said, there seems nothing wrong, but let's just service it. And they quickly opened up the, you know, the gadget at the back and they were able to deal with it. Now, while I was there, a young man, came out of the garage and looked at my phone and said, oh, hi, excuse me, sir, your screen is broken. Can I replace it for you? I said, yeah, go ahead. And as we was replacing my phone, Felix and I entered into a discussion. And there and then I had an opportunity to introduce Christ. And today I have somebody who comes from Congo who calls me daddy because I led them to Christ. We stepped aside and I prayed for him and I said, Felix, you are a child of God and you have performed the purposes of God in your life. And I was able to sow a seed in his business of a phone business, you know, selling accessories. And I was able to, you know, give him much, some merchandise that I had and blessed him. And every evening, Felix from Congo, is calling, who lives in Nakuru, is calling me and saying he calls me daddy. And on his phone, when I gave him my number, he wrote, he saved my number as Daddy, to me, Mungu. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That God is calling you to bear fruit, not just the, the biological children. How many are you getting nowadays? Maybe two or three. 
Is that why God created you just to bear two kids and three kids or five kids? You know, if that was the purposes of God, then, you know, we, we are miserable. But God had a bigger plan. God had a bigger plan for you to multiply, to be fruitful. Many of us, and I remember sharing this in our Bible study, that many of us are like avocado Christians. Avocado Christians who have only one seed. They're not like purple seed, you know, fruit that has many seeds. You're not bearing enough. God wants you to bear more fruit. He says, fruit, be fruitful and multiply. God is looking for the multiply effect. And then he says, fill the earth and subdue it. Subduing means subjugate the world. In other words, bring it under control. You know, make use, good use of the earth. Economic and social well-being of all. You know, bring under control and defeat every, and defeat and vanquish and trance the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Eliot Kipchoge taught us in the 1.5, you know, 1.5, you know, you know, you know, you know, second that's during the marathon, that there's no human is what? Is limited. No human is limited. And then the God says, have dominion. Have territorial control. Establish, you know, establish government. Manage and be a stewards. You know, be a person that will still be good stewards of the things that God has put in, in your hands. Rule and dominion and have dominion over the streams of the air and the fields and the birds of the air and the world. Where I live, where I, where I moved to where I lived you know, a few years ago, maybe 10 or so years ago, I found, you know, my neighbors, you know, about 20 of them, they were living in darkness. There were no streetlights. Part of the road was not even tarmacked. And I was like, what, you guys, I said, the light has, the son of the living God has come. And you're not going to live in darkness anymore. They used to fear thieves because the area is, because it was so dark, there's a junction. And many people used to be carjacked in that junction. Then Kanbaina and my colleagues know where, what I'm talking about. And within, a, within, a, within three months or six months, of me being in that area. I had coordinated everybody and we put street lights in who even did the road, you know, using contribution for members. All they needed was somebody to come in and take dominion of the place and rally them together and they were able to contribute and be able to give us, you know, money to do to the road. Horizontal, horizontal, you know, purpose. God is calling us to be stewards. God is going to calling us to be you know, to be, you know, uh, uh, people that will bring leadership into the society. And as a, as a bring to this to an end, maybe you're asking, I haven't gotten to know my purpose. What is my mission? Neither do I know my purpose nor my mission. God expects you to be a provider. God, ex you know, has shown us the ethos of work. God is a fast worker. And with all due respect, Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible says that he, God looked at all that he had done and he was happy and he evaluated in Genesis chapter 1 verse 25. He evaluated all what he had done and he saw that it was good. God has called you to be a worker. God has called you to cultivate. To cultivate. And God has made you as a man to be stronger so that you can be able to do even the work better. So God has called you to be a cultivator. God has called you to be a worker. And we also see that God has called you to be uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 a protector. Genesis 2, verses 15, <clears throat> the Bible says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work and to take care of it. God has called you to take care of his kingdom. God designed that man will protect everything that God has from animals, from wild animals and everything else that God has created. God has called you to be a protector. So God, one of your mission is to provide and to be a worker. God also requires you to be a, a steward, a protector, a steward and a caretaker. But we also, see that, <clears throat> we also see that God has called you to be an encourager, an encourager. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, David, for encouraging me. Amen. Amen. God has called you to be an encourager. Now, I'm thinking about Paul again. If you read about the story of Paul, 
when he got saved, he tried to preach in Jerusalem, but people didn't accept him. He went back to the village in Tarsus, and he lived there, and he was almost forgotten. But there's a man called Barnabas who went looking for him and encouraged him. He promoted him. The Bible says he stayed there with him and for a whole year started preaching in Tarsus with him. And after Paul had gotten acquainted with preaching in the village, Barnabas brought Paul back to Jerusalem. And now Barnabas could be able, you know, Paul could be able to preach in Jerusalem. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. God is calling you to be an encourager, a yes. promoter. Yes. One who, that will encourage others to be able to take up the call of God. Amen. And finally we see God is calling you to be a, prof, you know, a prophet like we have seen in the life of you know, Jeremiah. God is calling you to be a prophet, a visionary. Somebody who will, you know, Bible says in Genesis 2, you know, 23, that Adam was able to name all the animals. And when the wife was brought, the Bible says she, 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 he said, this is now the bone, you know, the flesh of my bone, the flesh of my flesh, the bone of my bones. She shall be called woman. And we see God using him as a prophet. And finally, teacher. So we're looking at provider, we're looking at protector, we're looking at a promoter, we're looking at a prophet, and finally we are looking at teacher. Or a priest, or the ambassador. Again, on 4th of May, when I was celebrating my birthday, very early in the morning, I got this text from my son, my second born son, who is married. He said, to my, to my own and only dad, on your birthday. Thank you for always picking up the phone when we need advice and teaching us the meaning of patience and love. Happy birthday with love, Odie and Joe. I cried when I saw this. That I've been they can recognize that I've been teaching. God is calling us to be teachers. In Genesis 3, 20, Genesis 3 from verses 2 and 3, we see... Eve reminding Satan what God said. But what God said to Adam, Eve wasn't there. But he was taught by who? By Adam, isn't it? So God is calling us to be teachers. God is calling us to teach sound doctrine. God is calling us to be people that will be able to you know, impact the life of those who are around us. And David alluded to this as I bring this to a close, that Jesus had a purpose. In John 6, 38, he says, For I have come to do down to, from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who has sent me. John 6, 38. In John 4, 34, he says, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who has sent me and to finish his work. And then what was his mission? He says in Luke 4, 18 to 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Maybe you're here and asking, so how do I find my purpose? You can only find your purpose when you connect with God. Bible says Jabez called unto God and said, Oh, oh, that you would be, you bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that I may not cause, cause pain. The Bible says, so God granted him what he had what he requested. I don't know what is your request before God tonight. This afternoon as we go before God, maybe you're saying, God, reveal my purpose and my mission in life. God, I have wandered away from you. God, I have gone into circles. I have not gotten to understand my purpose in life, my mission in life. We are here, God is saying tonight, that he is here. When you call upon him, he says, when you call, when I called unto the Lord, he heard my cry. 
And so in this moment of prayer, every head bowed before God, and you're saying, I need to know my purpose. I need God to reveal to me my direction in life, why I am here, and why he has set me at a time like this. What has he ordained me for, like Jeremiah? You are asking yourself, God, show me direction. Maybe there has been confusion. The enemy has brought all manner of confusion over your lives. Maybe over your business. Maybe over your family. Maybe over your, you know, your, 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 your work. And you're wondering, where is my purpose? Where is my direction? And you're saying this afternoon, oh Lord, like, you know, Jabez, I pray that you will open my understanding that you'll open my knowledge, that I may be able to know why you have made me, why I am here today, and what is my assignment. If you are, that's your prayer, that is the cry of your heart, wherever you are, just lift up your hand, just lift up your hand before God, God will see that, and will pray with you in the name of Jesus. You're saying, God, I need to know my, I don't just want to float around without purpose. I want to know clearly, without ambiguity, what is the purpose of my life. Father, Lord, I thank you because your people, oh God, have heard your word. You have spoken to us so directly. And now I pray that you shall reveal it, each one of us that first you created us for your worship. Oh God, that you will bring worship to you. And then God, you may guide us both vertically and horizontally, your purposes upon our lives, so that you may be able to know your will and your purpose upon our lives, that you may be able to know the purpose of God and the mission of God upon our lives. Lord, thank you, because you are revealing this through your Holy Spirit upon our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. As you serve God, amen, as you serve God in your time and in your generation, that you will use your time, you use your purposes, you will use what God has put in your hands to be able to impact the world for the kingdom of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you.